Hey everyone and welcome to this third episode, I think it's three, I'm not positive, of Around Virginia where we take you around the state of Virginia with high school football. The month of September is coming to a close. Had some great games on Thursday night, some good ones a week ago, and we got some tasty ones this evening here on this Friday. I'll be out in Chesapeake for Indian River and Deep Creek. I was in Northern Virginia a week ago for South Lake Centerville, but let's go through some things that have caught my eye here before we look at the, the big six or seven games that will break down for this evening, the final Friday of September for 2017. I tell you what, the game that really caught my eye uh, last week was what Blacksburg did to Salem. You, of course, have the two-time defending state champs in Class 4. You have the reigning state champs in Class 3 that moved up to Class 4 in Blacksburg. And boy, did the Bruins put it on Salem, winning it 49-12 to by 37. I'm sure I've taken some flack from some people on the boards. That's why I've tried to stay off them this week about not having Salem in the top 10. They started out the season number 1. They dropped to number 2 after the Dimley loss. Still a very good team. Stephen Magabar has got an excellent program. But in this game, Blacksburg, they were ready to play, and they put it on them like nobody has done since Pulaski County back about a good 10 years ago, maybe nine years ago or so. So I was really impressed with what Blacksburg did, given Cole Beck ran for 355 yards and three touchdowns. He got the player of the week. A plaque is coming your way soon, Cole, uh, who's done to a final three of UNC Pittsburgh, Virginia Tech from our good buddies at Virginia Trophy. We thank Bruce Pearl and the gang there. Uh, Cole Beck had a great game. Tyquest Terry fought off the stomach bug, and he's electric, running the ball, catching the ball, a do-it-all guy, jack-of-all-trades for Blacksburg. And Tyquest Terry would be considered an even greater player in people's eyes if it wasn't for Cole Beck, almost overshadowing him at times. Tyquest Terry is a great talent in his own right, and he's getting some recruiting attention, too. He's got some offers on the table. And then the quarterback, what can you say, Grant Johnson, 179, three touchdowns through the air. He did it well at the end of last year. Got that Blacksburg attack really rolling here, uh, two-dimensional, throwing it and running it. And that was the difference there. I think just a little bit more explosive, a little more balanced, and just efficient, crisp. Blacksburg got it done, and they have catapulted themselves up into the conversation as a four class four title contender. We wondered about them moving up. Some people thought they didn't belong in the top ten. They were in the top ten around that six, seven spot, and they're now up to number two. And I think deservedly so, as they looked the part, really hammering a good Salem team that will find their way back in there and be heard from before years over. You know, folks, you got to realize how good Class 4 is. I'll say it right now on record. Class 4 is the deepest of any of the six divisions. And I'd love to hear from people in 6, 5, fight me off. I didn't say necessarily the best. I said the deepest. Now, you can make a case of the best, too. But you look at the teams outside of top 10 right now in our rankings, which we know means next to nothing. You got Dinwiddie, Blacksburg, Monica, and Lafayette, Louisa, Eastern View, Millbrook, Deep Creek, William Byrd, and Liberty Bilton. By the way, William Byrd at number nine. They have one of the best backs in the state in Larry Basham. Only two of those teams have a loss. Blacksburg, which was to number one, Lord Botetot out of class three. And Lafayette, which was close to Norcom in a game they were winning most of the way, outgained them, outplayed them statistically, lost it in the end. Everybody else outside of top ten, they're worthy of be being in it, that are right there knocking on the door. When you got Lake Taylor three and one, the one L a bad one to freedom by a whopping margin, but we know about what Hank Sawyer done with the Titans there, always in the mix. EC Glass is undefeated, 4-0. Kings Forks, 3-1. They were up 12 on Class 6 Western Branch, let it slip away. What about GW Danville at 3-1? They're averaging 53.3 points per game, juggernaut offensively. Now, if the defense comes to play, hey, they could be scary come postseason time. Offense, already scary. And then Salem and Sharando dropped out. Sharando 4-1, taking the yellow. We could go to Liberty Bilton. So again, we have to look at this big picture. Class 4, it is tough to get in the top 10, and we'll see who sticks when it's all said and done. A few results that I didn't see that coming. This should be a segment we should get sponsored. Hatfield didn't see that coming. Three games in the state from Thursday night, September 28th. I'll give it to you. Did not see it coming. And more so the margins than the results. Didn't see it coming. Start off with the Robinson Rams beating Hayfield 42-7. to Hayfield was a play away from beating South County a week ago. The great wide receiver matchup, Dylan Spaulding for South County. I think the best receiver in the state. has gone off for Michigan. I think the next best receiver in the state, Brian Cobbs of Hayfield. He's committed to Maryland. They went at it. Great game. Hayfield gets thumped by Robinson 42-7. to And Robinson has found something offensively in the last few weeks. They could be a dangerous dark horse team come playoff time. And they had a low seed a year ago in Class 6. Would not want to draw them in the first round if they get there. That's not a team I want to see, whoever they see in Class 6. 
Another game that caught my eye. Princess Sand beating Bayside 40-9. Thought it would be closer than it's been. Thought PA had a chance. Did not see them beating Bayside by 31. Didn't see it coming. Remember, they hadn't scored on Bayside since 2010. Hadn't beaten them since 2005. Just a week ago, PA, which is known for its girls' basketball, Darnell Dozier over there, always bringing championships to Princess Sand and Virginia Beach. They, they snapped an 11-game losing streak to Green Run. They snapped an 11-game losing streak to Bayside, which is now sputtering a bit. Remember, they lost so many guys that transferred out before the season. John White did a great job in Game 1. They beat Cox, putting up 63 on the board. They have the Navy commit at linebacker and Trey Jones. But so many sophomores on this roster, they lost that 34-7 to lead against Green, uh, Green Run. They, were, they lost 15-10 to to Lancetown without their starting quarterback in the Quest Saunders. Not making excuses for him by any means. But this is a team that's really just going in the wrong direction right now. PA is getting hot to where I'm not saying you got to watch out for them to go deep in the playoffs, but they're going to be in the playoffs and they're going to be an interesting draw for whoever sees them in Class 5. They keep this up. Jelani Fair doing a good job. And they have another Maryland commit. We mentioned Cobbs for Hayfield. Daryl Jones for PA. What can you say? As dynamic a player as there is in the Beach District now, right now, wide receiver, defensive back, he's running the ball too. He gets it done in all three phases and just a terrific talent. And didn't see this coming. Gloucester over Bethel, 20 to nothing. My co-host, the coach Ed Young on the radio show, we, you can hear every Saturday, 94.1 ESPN Radio, high school sports talk. Uh, he had Bethel, I had Gloucester. Found out yesterday afternoon Cameron Walker, the best defensive player for Gloucester, would be out for the game, suspended. I almost wanted to text Ed and change my pick. I'm glad I didn't because Gloucester shuts out Bethel. I thought they'd win the game. Without Walker, I was a little skeptical. Okay, I'm a little more than a little skeptical. I was pretty skeptical. But they get it done with the defense playing great against Bethel, who's trying to find their offense. And then Isaiah Spencer at quarterback, he continues to put up big numbers, much like Jones in the beach at a school that hasn't won a lot. Spencer's got to be in the conversation for player of the year in his district, the Peninsula District. And there you have it. Gloucester, Princess Anne Robinson, kudos to you. Whereas the likes of Bethel, Bayside, Hayfield trying to find some answers here as the postseason is not too far off in the distance. We're just passing the midway point now here of 2017 in high school football. All right, looking at some of these games, and i got a couple more storyline things I want to hit on, too, before we sign off on this Friday, the final one of September. Game of the week. I've circled this game for a few weeks now. It's Lord Botetot, 5-0, Stanton River, 4-0. Number three in the state of Stanton River, Lord Botetot's number one in Class 3. And I took some flack on Facebook and social media and probably on the boards, too, about having Lord Botetot number one. Let me tell you, they played a grueling schedule. Western Albemarle, who's a better-than-one-in-three team, they played Blacksburg. The only thing to beat Blacksburg, it was Lord Botetot. They played Harrisonburg, a Class 5 team with a good quarterback in A.C. White. And they're undefeated. And they've done it with a slew of injuries, which is amazing to me. Jamie Harless doing a masterful job over there at LB. And he's got a great line led by Noah Overstreet on the defense. Jesse Hansen on the offense. Jesse's got six offers. Just pulled in West Virginia uh, not too long ago, as well as Appalachian State. Uh, he's a big-time player in the trenches. And that's the edge for Lord Botetot in this game. However, Chuck Poston at Stanton River, you fear to wing over there because they run that single wing, I think, as well as anybody in the state right now. They're doing just uh, incredible work, putting up some amazing numbers. You have Grayson Overstreet, the record holder, running the ball, committed to Richmond for linebacker. He's a bulldozer. Then you have Kellup Jones and TJ Tester, two other weapons that you have to be aware of. They get it done all over the place. I actually think Stanton River is going to win this game. I'm not sure the health and status of LB, and it'd be fascinating to see these two teams hook up again in the playoffs. I give the ever so slightest edge to Stanton River. And I took some flack for not having uh, them number one or Heritage Lynchburg, who just took an L to EC Glass. We love what Heritage Lynchburg has done this year, but uh, didn't get it done against EC Glass. I think Lord Botetot's going to be right there at the end. This is just a tricky game for them as they take on this uh, Stanton River machine, and they are a machine at the moment. Deep Creek 4-0 at Indian River 4-0. Uh, I tell you what, Indian River's defense has been playing lights out, but so has Deep Creek's. Three straight shutouts since holding Grassville to seven in the opener. We broke it down in depth in the Tidewater predictions. I tell you what, here's the game to me in a nutshell. Two things. For Indian River, can you basically mask your linebacker question marks, which – Right now, their defensive line is so good with Ben Smiley. Can you mask the linebacker question marks by making your skill position guys and the three rushers, your quarterback and Rasheen Brooks and your two backs and Nishan Overton and Ricardo Ray, factors in this game? And you have to exploit that Deep Creek secondary. Whereas Deep Creek wants to control the line of scrimmage, milk the clock, 
and force Indian River to have to finish drives when they do have a drive because they did it to Western Branch and Western Branch got stopped twice inside the 10. I think this is a, a total white knuckler down to the wire, one or two point game, one or two one possession game for sure in my eyes. I took the Braves 14 to 13. I'll stick by it, but I have a funny suspicion Deep Creek is ready for this game and they will not be faced one bit by Indian River who has to make them throw the ball, abandon the running game with Damian Everett. They need to jump out in front because if Deep Creek gets the lead, they're going to be a hard team to come back on unless you have a lot of firepower and a passing attack. And Indian River has a passing attack, but it's not the most accurate deep down the field as years ago, perhaps. They want to be more run-driven to set up the play action and some of the quick screens. So uh, that's going to be a fun game to check out tonight, which I'll be at in Chesapeake. Another game our own Larry Vaughn will be at, Phoebus, Lake Taylor. Phoebus is 4-0, Lake Taylor is 3-1. I took Lake Taylor close in this game. Phoebus' defense was mighty, mighty impressive, holding Woodside out of the end zone with a chance to tie it a couple weeks ago. They won it 13-6 with Daryl Bryant and Damian Charity, Juan Purdy, and that crew stopping the Wolverines at the one three times. Whereas Lake Taylor's defense, it's been beaten up a little bit. Got better a week ago against Norview. They're getting healthier with Tavion Copeland, their lineman back in the fold. I think both teams have multiple backs that will get it done. Daniel Wright, Daquan Fleming for the Phantoms. Deion Smith, Malik Newton, a freshman for the Titans. Who's going to make fewer mistakes? Which quarterback will not cost his team in this game? Uh, both offenses can be a little turnover prone. At home, Lake Taylor, I think, rises to the occasion. If Chris Daniels plays a big game for Phoebus, they will win. Not maybe win, they will win. So you don't want to put it all on one kid in the QB spot. He's just got to be a game manager. Don't force it. If he does, they get the win on the road. I'm going to lean ever so slightly with the Titans in this game by a whisker. Another game that could be by a whisker, Thomas Dale, Dinwiddie, Dean Lewis highlighted it for you in the Richmond forecast. Uh, Dale's 3-1, Dinwiddie's 4-0. Hard to go against the Generals here. They proved it out west against Salem without Kavon Pope. We saw Kyman Pope, uh, Petey step it up for them, as well as Josiah Williams. Thomas Dale does have firepower. They do have Chris Tyree. If he gets bottled up, what does Dale go to? And their defense, while good, I'm not sure they're going to shut down that Dinwiddie attack. They proved me wrong with the L.C. Burr game. I thought that would be a toss-up. Didn't think they would thump Burr like they did. Had an L against Hermitage. This is going to be another tough game for Coach Tucker and his crew. I'm going to lean with the Generals and Billy Mills getting it done at home. North Stafford 4-1 at Stafford 5-0. And, oh. and this is a game where you're catching an angry North Stafford team, I think, Stafford. Nice story at 5-0, and oh, but you got Devin Ford, Devin Ravenel, a combo with over 1,600 yards rushing and 28 touchdowns already. There are duos that will not have that for the season at the QB and running back spots. Ford is, in my opinion, the best junior back in the state, and he will show why here in this rivalry game. Another rivalry game with Fredericksburg area teams involved. It's Colonial Forge 5-0 and oh, at Brook Point 4-0, and, oh, and I'm... Starting to light up because, my goodness, Colonial Forge is the Class 6 version of Lord Botetot in the sense of the schedule they play. They've played already tough teams. Just had that thriller with C.D. Hilton. Had to survive Riverbend. Uh, no chance to rest for them because they got Massaponics. Stafford and North Stafford still on the schedule. But Brook Point's got to be serious here. they got to be really on their on their uh, P's and Q's because Coach Buzzo's team beat them 41-36 to last year. They have a quarterback in Paul Pierce. No, not the headband-wearing one that played for the Celtics that's now an analyst for ESPN, but the quarterback who's a senior that has 475, the yardage through the air, a 7-to-1 ratio, and completing 71% of his passes. Uh, a good running back in Xavier Smith that's committed to East Carolina at linebacker. This is a, a solid football team and a well-established program that graduated a ton, but they're still right there. They don't rebuild, they reload. I compare them in a lot of ways to Massaponics, who they'll see in a week, and just beat North Stafford in an upset, a bit of an upset, 49-45 to 45 last week. Uh, I'm going to go with Colonial Forge tight in this game, but I will not be shocked if Brook Point gets them. I think Forge has the best player on the field in Josh Surratt. They have an accurate quarterback themselves and Ethan Garwood completing 69% of his passes. And I think they'll rise to the challenge knowing what happened a year ago. The one thing the Eagles have to be careful of is getting behind in these games. They did it a couple weeks ago against Hilton, came roaring back. I don't think they want to do this on the road against Brook Point because eventually it'll get you bit. And it'll happen in the postseason. If you keep playing with fire, you will get burned. So Forge has to get off to some better starts against some of these uh, upper end teams that they play. Another game that's uh, going to make the list here, two more before we sign off, Massaponics 4-1 at Riverbend 2-3. We know about Massaponics. Uh, Mr. Beaver leading them up front in the trenches. Riverbend is 2-3, but a good 2-3. They lost to Forge by 8, Highland Springs by 7, Manchester by 7. 
I kind of like Riverbend in this game. At home, Massaponics did have that 42-14 to loss to Woodgrove. They are playing well. I mentioned on Hats Hits, teams that do what they do, they do it well, and uh, they continue to do what they do. This is a game where Riverbend at home, they're gonna, they know the importance of it for their playoff situation. I like them to get the W against Massaponics in what should be a, another dandy of a ball game involving the Panthers of Massaponics, who has Colonial Forge next week. And the last one for today, EC Glass 4-0 at Brookville 3-1. and We mentioned about Glass, how they are one of the quiet teams, undefeated, surprising. Uh, Brookville got the good quarterback in Tanner Bernard, or 3-1 and at home. The Bees did lose a week ago to Amherst County. Uh, this is going to be a tricky game for them. Uh, I'm going to go with Glass on the road. And what is another toss-up type of game. Brookville is at home. I think Glass will come from behind and get the W in this one, which is a, a hard game to figure out here. But uh, if they find a way to neutralize Bernard in the passing attack, Glass should be in good shape. Hilltoppers will take that. So two other things before I want to sign off here. Marion, 5-0, and another quietly good surprising start. Class 2, they're going to find their way in the rankings. They keep this up. I think they'll move to 6-0. and And then uh, Goochland, they're number one in the state right now in our Class 2 rankings. Again, number one in the state at 4-0. You don't hear a whole lot about them because you hear plenty about Union and Appomattox, which had the long win streak. Clark County has been a great story, and they've been playing tremendous football with Brian Wallace leading that defense. And uh, I think Goochland's defense is in that conversation as one of the best in the state. You think about Oscar Smith in Class 6, Stonebridge in Class 5, is just shutting people down with Jack Costco, Kellis Martin, and that crew. And then I think in Class 2, Goochland's defense with Ricky Mayfield, the four-year starter. you got the sophomore, Devin McCray. You need to know about him. He's a big-time player. And Sam Brooks at linebacker. Uh, they returned just two guys on offense from last year's team as starters, seven back on defense. And Goochland is starting to make some noise and catch my eye. And then another team that has a chance to move into rankings, I uh, mentioned Marion in Class 2. I forgot about them in Class 6 in one of the games that I was at last night. Lancetown Eagles, Tommy Riemann, a veteran in the area, former NFL running back, had a, had a brief stay with the Steelers and the Chiefs, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Tommy's produced so many quarterbacks. Think about Michael and Marcus Vick, Aaron Brooks, and he's got it, arguably his best team at Lancetown since he took over. Uh, you know about Lancetown and its heyday with Chris Beatty and Percy Harvin. Won't go as far as say this team is at that level, but... Brent Stooks at quarterback, he is fun to watch. Joseph White at wide receiver and defensive back, he is outstanding too. They got Victor Jones back at running back to compliment Luke Haskett, and Victor's a presence on defense for them as well. Uh, Coach Riemann, he's got himself a team that's going to be in position to get that number one seed if they went out. The schedule's not easy the rest of the way. They've still got to play a couple of tricky teams, Salem, uh, Cox, but uh, Lansdowne at 6-0, they're a team that's got a chance to crack the rankings in Class 6, which is no easy task uh, to do because there's so many teams right there knocking on the door, similar to Class 4 in that regard. So there you have it. That is Around Virginia for this final Friday of September. I could keep going, but I have to get ready to go to my ball game. We hope you enjoy yours. We'll do our chats and our mailbags soon as well. And keep it tuned to virginiapreps.com for all your information with high school sports and high school football around Virginia. We'll talk to you again in October.